Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Lena and welcome to another video. So, I'm doing this basically because I just read three great sci-fis and I kind of wanted to gush about them. <laughs> but I don't really want to do it on my wrap-up because they are usually pretty long already. So yeah, I kind of wanted to give these books at least five minutes of my time for you to understand that they are fantastic. But yeah, let's start with Mallory by Josh Matterman. This is basically here because I had like zero hopes for this. I mean, I don't really like continuations when they are just published years and years later. I found them almost all the time unnecessary but I was really surprised with this one you have probably already heard about this but the first book is called um what the fuck is called the first book what's called the first book in English I I only can remember the name in Spanish Bird Box Birth Box yes the first book is Bird Box and I'm sure that you have already read the book or watched probably the, the movie? Was it a movie? Yeah, on Netflix, which was pretty okay, but that's it. In this world, there's something that is making people insane once they take basically a look at it. So people are wearing these blindfolds and they have to basically move through the world blind. I was so surprised by this one. I really thought that it was going to be <laughs> like if he's. Like, I thought that it was going to be awful if I'm getting um, really honest with you. But it was really surprising. I thought that it actually added something to the story. I really thought when I finished the first one, I really, really loved the first one. It's such a good book. There's this scene in the well. Oh, that's so scary. And it's actually the first audiobook that I ever listened to. Bird books. But yeah, I loved the first book. So I was pretty hesitant to read this sequel. Because as I've told you, sometimes they're the sequels are great, <laughs> but when I finished the first book, I kind of thought that it was a really, really open ending. It it didn't have like a real conclusion, you know, she just gets to that place and the book ends. And it's kind of, um, yeah, I'm trying to keep this spoiler free as possible, <laughs> but she just gets there and the book stops. It's, it's not like a real conclusion and there's nothing about the creatures or, or whatever the fuck they are but I was just like, I really liked it I kind of wanted to know more and this one gives us more it gives so much more it tries to kind of explain these things and there's a huge, huge and super cool concept on it transportation I mean, if you have read or watched the first movie you see that walking blindfolded is not great so there's this concept about a blind train that is moving around the country and it was so fascinating. I thought that it was clever as hell. I was just like, yeah, it's the kind of only transportation that you can use without using your eyes because the railroads are already there and it's going to follow it no matter what. So it's just like, damn, I was so pleased by it. I kind of wanted to hit um, Tom in the face several times, but I get it. He's a teenager. What was I saying? I had to stop recording because my boyfriend was calling me and I can't remember what I was saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. I kind of hated Tom for a bit because this book actually takes place a um, couple of, I think it's 10 years after the events of the first one, which I didn't know when I was reading it, but it was great. In the beginning of this book, was fantastic. It was pretty scary and I really, really liked it. I was overall so surprised. I don't really want to go into spoilers or anything, but if you have read it, talk to me because I would really like to talk about the book, especially the ending. And I kind of think that he could have done like a longer book about it. I don't know. It, it was great overall. I really enjoyed it. I listened to it in two days or something. I was so, so interested on it. The only thing that it was a bit mad for me was the villain in this one. If you have read it, you know it was a bit meh, but overall it was really, really, really good. I really liked it. I will highly recommend you actually check it. I know there's some, so a good amount of people that are hesitating about this one, but I wouldn't 
it was really really good. I will highly recommend it. I gave this like 4 for 5 stars. As good as the first one, I think. And also, Mallory in this one is such a relatable character. I mean, I will... Oof, Tommy is such a dumbass. <laughs> I highly agreed uh, with Mallory on almost everything. And I was just like, why wouldn't you listen to her? Oof, like all the time. But yeah. I really liked it. I just wanted to gush about it a bit. <laughs> it was super good. I will highly check I will highly recommend to check it out. And if you have never read Bird Box, do it. It's such a good kind of sci-fi horror book. Oh, amazing. Then let's talk about this one. I'm actually only going to talk about Firefall but Blindside because this is the Binot edition and the first book is Blindside. And wow. This is a first contact with Aliens novel. We basically received this um, kind of message that wasn't actually meant for us, but we get it anyway. And they send this ship and go to these coordinates and they basically find a ship there. I'm going to leave it at that. This book is, was so clever for my tiny brain. Oh my God, I felt so dumb, so dumb throughout this whole book. There are some talks here about morality, what makes us humans, what are humans, what are we supposed to do? Oh, the ending was fantastic. I was just like, yeah, wow. I haven't felt that stupid <laughs> since reading uh, The Three Body Problem, I see she knew, but this one, dude, Peter Watts, <laughs> I don't know how Echo Park is going to go, but man, I'm kind of dying to read anything he has done. Like, anything. I felt so stupid. It's just, oh, and there's such a cool concept on here. Like, bumpers are part of society. And that was so well integrated with this story. I was so surprised. At the beginning, I mean, I really like bumpers. But at the beginning, I kind of was hesitating a bit because it's such a fantastical element. And it's such a heavy science fiction story that I didn't understand it, but it was so well integrated. I loved it. I couldn't stop listening to it and it's, it's pretty, pretty heavy. It has like continuous uh, jumps between the story of our main protagonist and the present time where they are on the ship and they are exploring this coal. Like, the flashbacks are really well integrated with what is happening on the present day. That kind of thing. Uh, I loved it. I loved it. I, I was so impressed by this book. I mean, by the end, I was just like... Oh. I don't even think that I have understood everything here. But still, I'm loving it. I... I, I actually took a break from reading the second one because my mind was so blown that I didn't know what to do with myself at the time. So yeah, I really need to jump into Ecopraxia. Um, I think that my bookmark is actually, yeah. I need to read Ecopraxia now and I'm just like, wow. It's actually a companion novel, but you really need to read the first one to get into the second one for what I understand because there's some very important things that happen in the first book that affect the second. But I can't wait. I I actually heard that the second one is worse than the first one. But still, the first one was so good that I don't care. <laughs> I kind of think that I'm going to give Echoprexia four stars. I'm feeling it because I've read some reviews, some spoiler-free reviews, of course. And I understand a couple of things already, but still. Blindsight was such a gem and I've actually never heard anyone talk about this book and I understand it's not for everyone I mean it's a very fairly fairly slow book and it has just you know these dilemmas constantly there's one thing here I'm a psychology student so there's one thing here about a uh, multiple personality disorder I think that's how you call it in English that basically the people with that have made different bodies for their different personalities and it was such a cool concept I was blown away but they are all referring to themselves as there as they are like a complete individual and it was 
so intriguing, so fascinating. Um, I loved it. I, um, I just wanted to say that I love this book so much. <laughs> And I don't really want to talk about uh, this one on my wrap, but because I will be just like, I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. I kind of really want to reread it, now that I know the ending, to see some things, how they developed, because some really weird shit happened. <laughs> As I told you, I don't know if I understood it completely, but it was great. I mean, you can see it, I can stop laughing because it was so good. But yeah, if you are really, really into science fiction, I will highly recommend this one. If you're not, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because it's pretty heavy and it is weird. It's that kind of weird where you're just like, what the hell? Well, I, I love the star side. Of course I gave it five stars. I mean, it's one of my new favorite books from this year. And then let's talk about this book. Oh my God. Last night I finished The Dream of Terra 2 by Timmy O. This book was so good. Ah. Again, it's a pretty, pretty slow science fiction. It's uh, mostly a character-driven story, even though the plot is basically that a uh, century ago, this woman discovered this planet that is basically very, very similar to Earth, and they want to be like a new world there. So basically, a group of astronauts is assembled with a senior crew and a teenage or they are not cycling teenagers all through all the whole book, but they start off as teenagers. This is such an special book. It's kind of a more yeah, slow, quiet book about how these characters have dealt with everything around them, with their life growing up as a part of this mission. And the first 130 pages, I think it was, we're basically about the group on Earth, how they grew up. They were in this school uh, since, I think, 12, 13 years old until they were old enough. It was great seeing their dynamic. Then, uh, from page 130 till the end, we're on the new ship called uh, Damocles. Was it Damocles? I think it was Damocles. <laughs> and we start to see how the actual training wasn't really useful once you're in the space because, I mean, um, some of the characters experience uh, really hard depressions, some of them uh, have, have like um, eating disorders, and pff, there's so many things in here. But yeah, we are basically inside their heads. There are different points of view for every character. Uh, of the younger crew, and it was great. I mean, the ending was a little bit meh for me, but it was really emotional, and overall, this is a very, very emotional book. If you're ready for it, read it. It's going to punch you in the face really hard sometimes. But yeah, I, I loved Juno's story, I loved Jessie, uh, Poppy, I, I really identified with her. She's this uh, language freak and I really really like her, but yeah, I kind of wanted to punch Harry in the face a couple of times But I mean we always need that kind of a character and then Astrid what a character. I think that she starts off like Pretty meh But throughout the middle of the book and then until the end She turns out great. I really like oh Cat. Again, this is more of a philosophical book than anything else, but still, I found myself really enjoying it. Lately, I've been really enjoying kind of more ethical type of books with some like moral dilemmas, like human morality and stuff, and I've been really liking it. This is a really, really quiet. It's just, if I could describe it, I would say that it's quiet. It's just like, yeah, they're going through this rough this rough experience and it's changing all of them. I kind of wanted to cry a bit by the end. I'm not like a really emotional person, but it, it was like pretty hard hitting actually, which I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed it. But yeah, I would highly recommend this one if you like more slow books, if you don't mind that they are slow or this is actually a really, really soft science fiction. You have never read like super hard sci-fi, I would highly recommend this book, actually. It's just like, yeah, really soft science fiction, and the characters are pretty, pretty relatable, so I would highly recommend it. I mean, these two 
books were great. <laughs> they're pretty different from each other. But yeah, they are pretty different. I will say that the that Mallory is more of a thrillery science fiction, more action-packed. Then Firefall is more of a hard sci-fi. I mean, take a look at it, but it's pretty hard. <laughs> and then this is more of a soft sci-fi about humans, about flawed humans. And it was great. I would highly recommend that you check any of these three books. But yeah, thanks for coming to my tech talk where I just gush about these three books that I really liked lately. <laughs> Without any sense at all, I just realized. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to be all for today. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And please let me know if you have read any of these books and let's talk about them. I will see you in the next video. Bye!